Mayor of Manchester, Councillor Afsal Khan. Afsal. Thank you very much, uh, Shiza. It was good to be here in Liverpool. Uh, great city, great history, great building. United Union. We are always forefront of fighting against fascism. Of course, all the other trade unions will also do that. Four minutes. I suppose when I was sitting there, I thought, oh no. I suppose what it means is cut the bullshit out. <laughs> Get to the bridge. <laughs> so I remember the night actually when the Griffin got elected, and lots of us who were there, we felt sick. We've been campaigning before that, but we saw that he got in. Many of us then pledged we want to make sure this will be his last, we will wipe him out. In that he will not get a second term. So for me, the work has been going on. Where we are now is really putting the next gear on to the 2014. There are many people who think with what they've been going through that perhaps we can just ignore them and they'll go away. I don't think that's the case. Quick three reasons why I think that's not the case. One is we need to be understanding what's happening. It's just not the BNP we're talking about. There are other far rights as well. We're seeing the UKIP as well with by-election, what's been happening, how they think they're the mainstream now. We also see in the European level itself in the parliament how we've got this thing, whole thing moving more in the right. So we need to make sure that we get more European member of parliaments who are socialists to strengthen that get the right message there. So that is one point. The second is really word of a caution. And that again is what you see about the Nick Griffin and many people who are experts who study them, that he reinvents himself, looks at what's happening, reinvents again and again. So again, I think we need to be cautious on that. And the third and more positive point, I think, as far as we're concerned, we have values. We stand for something. We need to go for that positive value that this is what it means to us, what we want in Britain, what we want in Europe, and the type of politics that we want. And that, I think, is why we need to make sure that we campaign there. So how are we going to do it? Again, three things. There are no simple answers, but I believe that in order to throw the BNP out of the European Parliament once and for all, our approach must be local, our campaign must be united, and our message must be relentless. Why local? Because we know that the European Parliament seems to be remote from our region, from our voters' lives. It is in this resulting atmosphere of low turnout and the protest vote that gives the, war, the right the flourishing uh, environment. So when we decide how we're going to cast our votes, we want to know what difference will my vote make for my town, my street, my family. These are the questions we need to answer honestly on the doorsteps, because the BNP will be answering them with lies. Our campaign must be united, because it's only by bringing together voices from across our communities, people of all races, of all faith and none, young and old, men and women, gay and straight, anti-fascist campaigners, together with labor activists and our comrades in the trade union movement, not just the community leaders, but a real bottom-up representation of the diversity of our communities, that we can provide a strong and a genuine alternative for disillusioned voters who might otherwise consider voting for Nick Griffin again. The BNP began to succeed when they took on the guise of community activists. But we are the real thing. And they cannot beat us when we are together. And our message must be relentless because the lies we have to counter are relentless, both from the far right themselves and the media on the subject of immigration and the subject of Europe itself. The level of misrepresentation is shocking. We must counter every myth every misleading statistics. I agree that it's wrong to refuse to engage with someone just because they say they have voted BNP in the past. We must not dismiss their fears as racist and move on to the next house. Instead, we must challenge their assumptions and talk to them about the gap between rich and poor that truly divides our country. The facts are on our side. We need to use them. And finally, what we must do is to keep faith, never forget, that the biggest, the racist, the homophobes are the real minority in this country. We are the majority. They stand for fear, we stand for hope. There is a politics of hate, ours is a politics of justice and equality. And they are the past, we are the future. Thank you very much. Awesome.